In this video, we are going to talk about what a series is. So I want to begin with an example. So this is example two, continuing the numbering from my last video of this section. So if I look at this sum, one plus a half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus dot dot dot. So we have this infinite sum. So we have this infinite sum. And the technical term for that is this is called a series. So the technical term for a sum is a series. So in particular, what we're going to be looking at are infinite series. And the main question we are going to be interested in is, well, sometimes when we add up an infinite amount of numbers, that will uh, sort of converge. It'll have a finite sum. Um, so if we want to find the sum of this infinite series, we are going to look at Oops, sorry, let's switch this to a different color. Let's keep this black. We are going to look at sequences of partial sums. So what a partial sum is, is instead of looking at all of these infinite terms, instead of adding up these infinite amount of terms all at once, let's just do it bit by bit. So S1 is going to be the first partial sum. That means you just take this first number in this list, just the one, and just have that on its own. S2 would be the first two terms added up, so that would be 1 plus 1 half. And I could simplify this to 3 halves if I wanted to. Um, S3 would be the first three terms added up, so 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth. And if we simplify that, we end up with 7 fourths. And S4 would be the first four terms added up, so that would be sort of the first three, and then added to one-eighth. So if you add seven-fourths to one-eighth, we end up getting 15 over eight. And in terms of figuring out what do these... So actually, the question that I want to sort of determine now is when I look at this, so what we have now is a sequence here. We have S1, S2, S3, S4. This is a sequence of partial sums. They're called partial sums because it's not the entire sum. It's just a part of it. That's why it's called partial. So what we, want, what we need to do is figure out, do these terms in this sequence of partial sums, do they have a limit? Do they converge to some finite number? So the first number here was just 1. The second number, 3 halves, it's actually easier to see what this might converge to if I write it as a mixed fraction. So this is 1 and a half. The next number is actually 1 and 3 quarters. The next number is actually 1 and 7 eighths. So it looks like these numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but this fractional part is getting closer and closer and closer to 1. So it seems like overall we're getting something that's really, really close to 2. So it seems like our sequence of partial sums is sort of converging, and this was our notation for converging. We either write an arrow or we write a limit. Seems like our sequence of partial sums is getting really close to 2, that is converging to 2. All right, so now let's state a more general definition of, a, of what a series is. All right, so a series is a sum. So in general, it's going to have the form a1 plus a2 plus a3, where these ai's are just some numbers, plus dot dot dot. So our sum might be infinite. So what we do then is we think about this series in terms of the partial sums. So I'm going to let s1 be just the first term, a1. s2 is going to be the first two terms added up, a1 plus a2. And if I keep going like this, eventually I could define the mth partial sum, s sub m. That's the first m terms added together. And now I'm going to introduce some uh, notation. And this is called sigma notation. I'm actually going to introduce two pieces of notation. So I have this equal sign with a colon in front of it. The way I read that is this equal sign with the colon in front is it means defined to be equal to. That's a really common math notation, mathematical notation, when we want to define what something is. 
Okay, so I'm defining this to be equal to this, this weird shape here. This is actually the Greek letter sigma, kind of looks like uh, an S. And we write n equals 1 underneath it. I write an m at the top, and then I have a sub n written here. So the way I make sense of what this is saying is, the first thing I do with this notation is, I plug in whatever this bottom number is for my variable here. So that gives me a sub 1. And then I keep plugging in uh, sort of one integer up and one integer up until I reach this integer at the top. So next I would plug in a sub 2, and then I would plug in a sub 3, and I start to add all of these together. So add that, and then add that, and I keep going until I reach this integer at the top, and that's the final number I would plug into here. So I stop once I reach a sub m. And that's what this is saying that this is, because that's what we had written here on this left-hand side. All right. So the way I read this in words is, we sometimes say this is the sum from n equals 1 to m of a sub n. That's how I would read this out loud. All right, so next I want to talk about how do we know when a series converges and when it diverges. So I want to state the definition first. So we say that a series converges to a single number L if the limit as m goes to infinity of s sub m equals L. So in other words, if these partial sums converge to L. Okay. Otherwise, so if that doesn't happen, we say that the series diverges. So the way that a series might diverge is if the sequence of partial sums, if these s sub m's, if their limit is either positive infinity or negative infinity, or if it's generally just something that does not exist, if it's d and e. Those are the types of things that would make a series diverge. Okay, so, so let me just reiterate this notation. So when I write something like this, so sigma, I have this n equals 1 at the bottom, I, have it, I put an infinity at the top, what does this mean? So this means I start off by plugging in this value at the bottom, a sub 1, and I keep going up integer by integer. So then, I, then I'd go a sub 2, and then a sub 3, and I start to add these together. That, that's what the sigma tells us to do. The sigma means sum. And I keep summing these, and the fact that I have an infinity at the top means I keep going forever. This is an infinite sum. So the fact that this is infinity at the top means that this is going to be an infinite sum. And this number at the bottom, here it's a 1, but it doesn't have to start at 1. So if I wanted to start off by, at 5 or 120, I could. And I would just write that here at the bottom. Okay. All right, so now an important, a an really important clarification. Okay, so when we talk about series, there can be confusion about the terms of a series, so the sequence of the terms themselves, and the sequence of the partial sums. So in the example that we did above, the terms were 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and so on. Those were the terms, and we just so happened to then be adding them all together. So this was the sequence of terms. And this sequence of terms, you know, it can have a limit. The limit as n goes to infinity, let me just call the formula a sub n for the terms. So these terms themselves are getting really, really close to zero. So that's what the sequence of terms is converging to here. But when I talk about the sequence of partial sums, so the partial sums, the first partial sum is 1, and then we had 1 and a half, and then we had 1 and 3 quarters, and then we had 1 and 7 eighths, and so on and so on, they also have, they also might have a, a limit that's a finite number. So in this case, the limit as n goes to infinity of these partial sums and my notation for these is we write capital S sub n, they have a limit. And it looks like the limit is 2. To prove this, so we will prove this using 
geometric series in a later video of this section. Okay, so there's this distinction between the sequence of the terms, just the terms on their own, and the sequence of their partial sums, because their limits might be different things. So the thing that we care about for a series in, uh, in terms of knowing what a series converges to is what the limit of partial sums is. is. So now we could write that the sum, so sigma, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n, which is 1 plus a half plus a fourth plus dot dot dot, that is 2. In other words, the sum of our series is 2. Alright, so at this point we have done this second goal. We've defined what a series is and discussed what it means for a series to converge and what it means for a series to diverge.